and welcome pocket watch here and it's about time for another episode of gore screaming show so yeah we just finished the scene in the well which was very surprising because it did not went as i thought it would and we got to see some of yamiko backstory or at least glimpse into yamiko backstory from what she said and i'm really curious about how this will go on because Yuka did not appear. Yuka did not appear this time, and this is v this is actually a huge change if you think about this. So yeah, I think just we'll just continue and see how it goes. So yeah, let's go. Got it. After they get home, Yamiko shuts herself of the off in her room. It looks like she, it looks like she's actually focused on work for once. Yamiko-san, Kyoji knocks on her door. Are you hungry? I can go buy something. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I know you will be dying from hunger if I don't come back. She replies with the fewest numbers of words possible. She sounds like she's at her wit's end. Anything in particular you want to eat? Okay. Even she only yelling back at him and won't show herself, Kyoji gets the impression she's very occupied. She can be such a pain sometimes, really. Kyoji shrugs and sets out to the convenience store. Okay. I'm back. He returns to the apartment and calls out. Convenience store back in, the, back in hand. But there's no reply. Instead, he's greeted by the sound of the shower running. Is she for real? I had them I had them heat up her pasta and everything. I mean, she can come out from the shower like in five minutes, so not a problem, just tell her that the food is here. The bathroom door opens as uh, into response to Kyoji grumbling. Okay. Is Kyoji going to be frustrated and she's going to be like in the towel or something? Whoa! So Kamiko pick out of the shower. Kyoji looks away hurriedly. Don't come out like that, you idiot. Oh, she's not even in the towel. She's just like picking out of the door, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I know you've told me about it a thousand times already, but stay in there. Just doing this to tease me anyway. You think it's funny, don't you? Yamiko clicks her tongue behind him. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, he is. I can hear you. Back in there now and put some clothes on. <laughs> can you reject her teasing? You know exactly what I'm saying, just go back in there already. For all her talk, when Namiko does come out from the bathroom, she immediately bowed. You said freaking anything. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, well, try eating something ordinary for a change. You cannot eat if you don't want to. I'm not forcing you. Okay, you, you can you can go by yourself. She looks at him uh, reproachfully. Koji only thinks she's being unreasonable. The soggy pasta is on you. The convenience store is five minutes walk away. Why do you, do you think? Why did you have to take a shower while I was out? I mean, that's a good good point. Don't you that because me? Keeping up with her nonsense is giving me a headache. Nico might be older than him, but seeing her now, he can barely believe she's a functional adult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and put underway. Uh, and put underway. If she can make it as a functional adult, Kyoji could probably pull it off too. <laughs> I don't know, Kyoji. I don't know. Like. You did not give me a very good impression in the previous roads to think 
that you can actually be functional adult. Yeah, Miko is still way better than you. You're dumb as hell. Anyway, sit down and eat already. You've got still you still got stuff to do, right? He shows Yamiko her seat and sits down opposite opposite her, having a sign. Okay. So it is freaking Yamiko Road. We have like Yamiko CG. We have actually Yamiko CG in the next day since. This is actual Yamiko Road. So it's not Yuka Road? I never heard about Yamiko Road before. Everyone was talking about, yeah, you get Yuka Road after you get initial free. Bullshit. <laughs> Jade. His fourth day at school is off to a bad start. First thing in the morning. Lashima finally shows up in the school. Okay, can we skip this? I cannot. Okay, that's weird. Uh, Sink falls. Oh, okay, this is that scene. We just don't have the scene because no girl will like stand in our defense, I guess, right? Kyoji is forced to stand in front of the blackboard with him, make apology, listen, blah blah blah, yeah. That irritates him so much, he ends up arguing with the teacher, who punishes him by making him stay after school for cleanup duty. As he reluctantly heads to the place he's being told to clean, he passes Satoshi and his cronies. Okay, so we actually are without help now in the in this situation. Akane, Aoi, and Kika will not stand in our defense this time, and Kyoji will have to do this himself. Okay? This can go bad or good, it depends. Yo, Fuck you. That's my, my, my welcome for you, Satoshima. What do you want? Glass jaw? Satoshima face twists with fire. But a moment later, he goes back to his usual nasty expression. Ever as much as the gentle, delicate boy who had to take two days off school, said about right, Fumiya-chan. <laughs> Fuck off. One of Sadashima lackeys stand up behind Sadashima angrily. The scrolling Sadashima holds up uh, a hand to stop him. I don't want to talk to you. I don't give a fuck. Talk this out, he says. He probably just wants to finish their fight from the other day. Or to be more exact, he and his lackeys want to pick up where they left off and lynch him. Sure. Where do we meet? Yeah? Okay, that's a weird place to meet. Why not after behind the school as usual? Okay, that's weird. Sadashima taps Kyoji on the shoulder. Okay. Sadashima like is mimic him, tapping Kyoji on the shoulders. Assholes. Kyoji kicks, kicks the wall in a fit of anger. Like they're walking nearby turns to look at him, alarmed. I swear to god, this time I will beat that piece of shit so hard he will stay down. He stumps over to the gym storeroom, only to stop in his tracks. Leaning into anger would be easy answer here. Even outnumber, he's confident he could at least take Sadashima down. But if he does that, they will just pin all the blame on him again. It was only a couple days ago. He was thinking about how he didn't want to cause any more trouble for Yamiko-san. And falling for their taunting now will just make her lose face again. Goji frowns. Still, if he ignores them altogether, they would get carried away and keep picking fights with him. And that would be pretty annoying. Then he would have been better of beating them down. So they will think twice about messing with him to begin with. But then again, they would probably think the same way. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, pretty much. Kyoji scratches his head on it. 
Why do those assholes have such a hate boner for him? It's one thing after another. Yeah. He finishes cleaning and reluctantly makes for the park. Satoshiman and his boys are already there in the corner of the park. The very image of the group of delinquents. They're leaning against the jungle gym, making that area of the otherwise welcoming park pretty unapproachable. Satoshima gets up, noticing Kyuji's arrival. Okay, let's see this. Yo, I'm not going to comment anymore. Yeah, you got got you to thank for that. This time, two of the lackeys took up positions to surround Kyoji. The other to stand in front of Satashima. As always, hiding behind someone else. You weakling. I guess, for how stupid they are, they're not completely brainless. They're making sure to properly guard Satashima this time. Yeah, because he cannot handle himself. Kyoji speaks up, trying to formulate a plan to shake the two guys covering him. So why did you call so why did you call me all the way out here? I'm guessing it is on a date. What the fuck do you mean? What do you mean I'm popular? I'm literally with no one in the school right now. What do you mean? You make zero sense, Sadashima. Yeah, I didn't think so. What's on your mind then? Sadashima smirks viciously. <laughs> Obviously. Well, I'm not surprised. He takes a sling of his arm. Looks like he's done pretending to be injured. Then tips off his jacket and hands it to the lucky standing behind him. Sadashima expression is full of clear blood and hatred. Even his tone of voice gets rougher. And you need four different people to beat people for you. Because you are just little bitch. I I hate you so much, god damn it. Sadashima glares at Kyoji, his face twitching with anger. Kyoji scratches his cheek awkwardly. Eh, uh, yeah, about that. Anyway, we could bury the hatchet and just put this behind us. Huh? Sadashima stares blankly at Kyoji, like he's been taken by a surprise. Kyoji is talking instead of acting this time. This is like, I cannot just, like, my brain cannot process this. Like, Kyoji being like, not impulsive. It's not what I'm used to, and I can't, my brain just cannot, like, click on this. I just realized he's not actually throwing punches at Sadashima instantly. Kyoji, you must be ill. This is not your normal behavior. What happened to you? <laughs> I mean, what's the point? Going back and forth like this? Fighting over it? Feels stupid, you know? Why don't I just say, I do, why don't I just stay out of your business and you leave me alone in return? How's that? For Kyoji, this is the honest attempt to a compromise. So the Shima expression since darkens though. <sighs> yeah, I figured you would say something like that. Kyoji looks up, heavy and sigh. I had a feeling this probably wouldn't work. I hate you. Actually, that's one thing I don't want you to take away from this. Kyoji follows his bros. Being seen as the coward is one outcome that won't sit well with him. Sadashima clan is on, still smirking. That's pretty much what I thought. The guy's thinking is so easy to predict, it's almost depressing. I'm surprised that you can actually think, Kyoji. I'm sorry, Amiko-san. He conjures an apology in his heart. If that was a manga TV show, 
he would set aside his pride and prostrate himself to see uh, an end to all this. But sadly, Kyoji never had been a nice guy and never the smartest one. Even if Kyoji got on all fours and begged and Sadashima forgave him, which wasn't like to begin with, the memory of it would wait on Kyoji hard forever. Yeah, I'm also on the team beat up Sadashima. I'm on the team beat up Sadashima, I'm not on the team beg for forgiveness to Sadashima. Like, I swear, just like, just eliminate this guy from the game, from the beginning. The humiliation would probably stay with him for as long as he lived. I really don't, didn't want to cause any more trouble for you, but... Oh, sorry. Guess that would make, that would make sense to you. I was mumbling to myself, after all. Sadashima goes close in Kyoji, forming a ring around him. Kyoji puts his back on the ground. He clenches his fists, making sure to keep his thumbs out. Kyoji resolves to see this fight through, crouching in preparation when suddenly... Okay? Yamiko for the save? A voice? That's far too relaxed for the situation enters his ears. All the boys crumble in place at the sound of this voice, like something out of an old comedy act. Being most familiar with the voice, Kyoji is the first to recover. Yamiko-san, what are you doing here? Okay. She's talking about that stuff with that tone in the situation. You refuse all the tension that gripped his entire being just moments ago, fizzing out. No! Stay the fuck out of her! No! No! Bad Sadashima, bad Sadashima, go away! Play dead! Sadashima's eyes scan over Yamiko with the same obscene, lustful gaze his father had. Go away! <gasps> I swear! Yamiko curls his lips into a, uh, her lips into a smile. Okay, Yamiko is just like countering him in every way. Okay. Let's see. Can she win the conversation with Sadashima? I hope so. Sadashima approaches Yamiko with a smirk. Sure. Okay. Yamiko produces a business card from her pocket and extends it to Sadashima. Kyoji appears at the card. Knew it. He drops his shoulders. It's an old card from the old job again. Kyoji pulls Yamiko by the arm and admonishes her with a whisper. His parents one thing, but you're gonna lie to Sadashima too? Yeah. Why well, I mean why not? Yamiko replied kindly, calmly and shrugs at Kyoji. She then raises her voice. So the others can hear. Love it. I love it. Wow. I so Yamiko, I love you. You are so good. That will make us spectacular news. Let me go pick up the sling so that she might throw the ground earlier. Wow, wow. Isn't just Kyoji or even Sadashima Lack is st uh, starting to smirk at Yamiko teasing. Sadashima scrolls, 
tanking the same bandage. It looks like uh, it looks uh, to Kyoji like his expression is con uh, toward the vex frustration. Yumiko peers into Sadashima's face, then sighs with a smile. Not the question I would never ask Sadashima, actually. <laughs> what the fuck? At school, Sadashima looks mature at best and sly at worst. But right here, right now, he actually feels like a boy his age. Yamiko tilts her head, and Sadashima regards her with a warped smile. Of course Sadashima thinks we have sex with Yamiko. Of course! Of course! Of course! Obviously! What? What? Why did I expect something else? Obvi- Yeah! Sure! What did he say, you little? His lucky is uh, laugh out loud, but Yamiko doesn't seem the slightest bit shaken by his provocation. She holds up a hand, stopping Kyoji, who was about to lose his temper, and Karis on unperturbed. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, nice! Lashima's expression contorts even harder. He closes on, uh, in on Yamiko, looking like he's a moment away from lashing out at her. He raises his voice. His raised voice doesn't face Yamiko at all. She locks her, her eyes with Sadashima and speaks clearly. Okay, y Yamiko is using Tok no Jutsu. There is no way I, like Yamiko is making s going to make Sadashima a good person. I don't, I, I don't believe it. I just can't believe it. There is no way Sadashima is going to have like a redemption arc. There is no way. There is no way. I refuse. Sadashima falls silent, his expression mixed. But a moment later he returns to his nasty warped smile. I hate you! Emika shrugs and turns around, then she taps Kyoji on the shoulder. Yeah. Kyoji picks up his bag and follows Yamiko. You can hear Sadashima shouting behind him. Oh, your stupid face. That was such a cool scene. Yamiko, I love you. This is so good. After they leave the park and head into the maze of houses, Yamiko cooks her head in displeasure. Pretty much, yeah. Well, actually, like you saved me back there. This whole experience put him in a bit of sour mood. Koji always had Sadashima pegged as a total asshole. But the way Yamiko Ward seems to shake him for a moment clings to Kyoji's mind. Maybe Yamiko Ward's actually resonated with him. That's the impression Kyoji got, uh, got from seeing the way Sadashima's expression wavered momentarily. He throws a sidelong glance at Yamiko. She always comes across as, as her irresponsible and fightly, and the thing she says feels more mischievous than anything else. But she can be as smart as the whip sometimes. Suddenly, Yamiko turns to look at Kyoji. Uh, to look at Kyoji. He jolts, and his eyes meet his. That look, she's up to something. Yamiko curls her lips into a smile. Okay. Sure. 
Let me guess, you want me to make dishes after dinner, isn't it? When we are going home to have dinner, yeah, but after dinner we have dishes. Oh, never mind. Investigating? Give me a break. Okay. Yeah, we could take him back to the well from yesterday. Okay, this is why we are going at night to the well. Okay. Why? What? Here again? What are we looking for? Yeah, we reply, Sana Shanti. Hmm. Interesting. She actually wants to go down. She will see the scribbles and possibly the passage. Huh? Down like inside the well? Yamka yeah, steps a flashlight in her belt and starts showing the lead of the well. A bad feeling setting in. Kyoji furrows his brow. Are we going down on this rope ladder? Yeah, Kyoji waves his hands in exaggerated fashion. Forget it, you are totally g getting going to get yourself hurt. And we go from us looking offended. Yeah, that was in the primary school. Yeah, that was literally decades ago. Okay. Yeah, that's not how running down your age works. <laughs> Rounding down your age. So she pulls the flashlight out of Yamiko's belt. I will go down. I'm in better shape here. Yamiko blinks a few uh, times. Just tell me what you want me to look for, plus I can't... Plus, can't I just snap some photos? What's it? I can manage that, no problem. Yeah, I did that before. Positive. It'd be, it would be a real pain if you tried to go down there and end up falling to the bottom. Yeah. And we could turn fancy for some reason. What? Is there a problem with me going down there? Why is she so nervous? I don't think this is only because she wants to protect Kyoji from potentially like falling down or something or getting hurt. There is something there that makes her being uncertain. Huh. Yamiko appears at Kyoji's face. As slight as be strange, huh? So she connects this to Yuka and Gore already? She have a feeling like maybe they are here? Ha! Huh. Because she's talking about supernatural. An unusual warning coming from the optimistic Yamiko. Koji cracks a sar uh, sardonic smile and holds up the flashlight. I'll be back in a jiffy. Okay, we are back to the well. Been a while. He nimbly snakes his body into the well. It's his first time ever using the rope ladder. It's a lot less stable than he expected. <sighs> the rocks are too thin and feel unsteady. And since the sun is setting, the light spilling in from above feels faint. He's nervous. I think so. Thanks. I almost sound like you're expecting me to fall. Yeah. Makes sense? Yeah, a responsible adult, huh? He reached what felt like a bottom of the rope ladder. He probes around the leg and finds solid ground. 
he hops off the ladder and switches on his flashlight. Okay, the bottom is about 7 square feet wide. And this time we have actual light. Last time we have he we had here like very dim kind of green light because he had only the flashlight from his toy or his collectible basically, right? So it wasn't like that illuminated. I remember this being uh, darker basically. Oh, this is different CG, I think. You can actually let me know if this is actually lighter. I'm not sure. I think this. I wonder if you remember. The bottom is about seven square feet wide. I have no idea how much is this, but okay. I'm not using this metric. And the ground is made of flat rock, as are the walls. It's his first time in a place like this, but he has to ask himself if it would really function as well. Yeah, there's the long corridor here. Insects skitter away as he casts the flashlight beam around. There's a tunnel ahead. It's tall enough for Kyori to pass through if he keeps his head down. Yamako Kerfi's voice calls down to him. It's a tunnel. I think it's a man-made too. You just peers in curiously. He hears Yamiko whisper to herself. Kyoji goes back. I'll check it out. Yamiko calls down to him. Frustrated, but Kyoji brushes her off. Don't worry, I'll be back. Kyoji steps into the tunnel. After walking down it for a while, he finds a door. It's heavy, metallic door that looks very old, covered in the reddish rust. What is it? He pushes the door gingerly, and it opens with a surprise ease. It's almost anticlimactic, with how rusted over it is, and he expected it to be heavier. Oh, there's the green stuff I remembered, probably. Yeah, this looks more like Cyanota. And all of the scribbles, the creepy scribbles all over the place. Like someone being like getting insane and just like trying to like leave like messages all over the place. <sighs> been a while since we've been here. Holy shit, I forgot how scared it, it looks. I literally forgot. He scans the flashlight around, illuminating what looks like squarish concrete box. Between its shape and the room it's in, it looks like a stone coffin. There's some kind of writing scribbles over the walls. Kogut shines the flashlight on it and freezes in terror. Yep, yep, yep. Hate, hate, make them pay, make them suffer, yep. Suffer and die, pay with their lives and then some. I will kill them all, stab them with a knife. Kill you, die, 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 die. Stupid idiots, hope you die. I will never forget this. Trash, 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 die. So this is Yuka scribbling on the walls after she got trapped here, basically. She really hated people who did that to her. I mean, no wonder, right? But she really went insane in this place. The words are scrawled in the color of blood. It's nothing but curses, but with a child vocabulary. Yep. We got a reminder now from what the Akane wrote. A shiver runs down Skyoji's spine. It feels like he might get cursed just for being in this room. Okay, I get it. It's kind of thing is perfect for Yamiko Sunworks. Nope, it's not. He speaks to Kim, he is calm, but his voice echoed through the dark stone chamber, startling him. He takes out his phone and opens its camera. He's not sure if he can actually record anything in the darkness. He tries anyway. I mean, you have flashlights, so what's the problem in recording? I don't see a problem here, Kyoji. I see literally no problem. He's pretty much at his limits. After snapping a few photos, Kyoji hardly leaves the chamber. Another shiver strikes his spine as he leaves the room. 
the thought of going back in there is terribly frightening. Also, what is that? Not, not, we never actually got the explanation as well. We never actually checked, really. This, like, box in the middle of the room that he talked about. The stone box that looked like a coffin that he says. That's a weird thing as well. Wonder what it's all about. Like, this whole room is just, like, terrifying. Demikasan. He returns to the bottom of the well and directs the flashlight upwards. With a small opening above him, he can see a dusky sky beyond the foliage. Demikasan. I took a look around. It isn't it about time we wrapped this up. There's no response. Did something happen? Oh my god. Are we already trapped in gore? Ward or something? Why I didn't expect that to like not having answer. You can hear uh, talking up, uh, up above. There's someone there. Oh shit! Is Yuka meeting with Yamiko right now? Doji, go up there, go up there. Eva, Eva's drop. Come on. The same way he climbed down, Koji stuffs his flashlight in his belt and starts climbing up the ladder. Mimikasan, I tried taking a few photos, but... Koji regards Yamiko with confusion. Her expression looks a bit stiff. <laughs> yup. Yup, she's talking with Yamiko. Holy shit. Looking around, he spots a girl standing in front of Yamiko. Kyoji feeling a deja vu. Kyoji feeling of deja vu strikes Kyoji when he looks at the girl. But she isn't someone he knew before he left the town. Yeah, and this is the new road. So technically, you did not meet her yet in this road. So can how can you have the deja, deja vu? So in this road he have a vague memory of her somehow, somewhere? We're going to meet, like, learn more? A friend of yours? Yamiko shakes her head. Okay, now I wonder if you are, if Yamiko is just playing with us, because she's good at hiding stuff. That she don't know Yuka, or she generally don't recognize her, or she actually don't know Yuka. She might be lying to us. Huh? Even as uh, he listens to Yamiko, he can't hear his eyes of this girl. Yeah, she's pretty much like a... Like, charming anyone who's like looking at her. She's working like a succubus, basically. He remembers her from somewhere. Deja vu hangs on his mind. She's too young to be an old classmate. And he doesn't remember a girl like her living in this neighborhood. Why is he bugging? Why this is bugging him so much then? Yeah, I'm really curious as well. Please remember. All right. Didn't I run into you on the first day of school? Oh, right. He did get a glimpse of her in this road. Never mind. This is not that weird then. Right. Yoji claps victoriously, finally remembering where he saw her. I mean, not really, but you remember, right? He thought he might have dreamt it. But she really was there after all. But the girl doesn't say anything. She simply keeps staring at Kyoji and smiling. She then moves her eyes to Yamiko. Okay. Okay, so since this is not our girlfriend, Yuka is... Yeah, that's fine. You can, you can stay with Yamiko. She's your guardian. Yeah, it's fine. She's not going to steal you from me. Okay. What's fine exactly? 
What did you mean by that? So actually nothing bad will happen to Yamiko it seems. Unless we really go like for Yamiko like being with Yamiko. But yeah. She should be fine otherwise. Seems like it. According to Yuka. With that mysterious whisper, the girl turned around casually. Hey. Toji moves to stop her, but suddenly hears a snapping sound behind him. Yamiko lunges at the well. When Toji turns to look at her, she's gripping what's left of the rope ladder. Seriously? He approaches Yamiko and checks the rope. It doesn't look like it was cut by the knife, or like it was torn. Yeah, probably gore. Torn it off. I guess climbing up and down the ladder weakened the rope. Yamiko scrutinizes the rope carefully, following her bro. Yeah? We found a lot of like creepy scribblings though. Yeah, uh, Yamiko san your tone. You're like uh, your old self again. Didn't you notice? You were talking like a normal person until just now. Like when you were talking to the principal. Ah. I'm really interested in her backstory now. I'm really getting interested in this. Yamiko places a hand on her cheek, cocking her head curiously. Uh, she looks like she only just realized it. She then carries on with a self-deprecated smile. Okay. So you don't recognize her. Okay. Huh. Georgie gets what she's saying. He also felt a strangely oppressive air about that girl. Yamiko then lowers her voice tone and mutters to herself. <laughs> she does remember her! She's just not aware that she still looks the same. She just thinks she reminds of, of the girl that was trapped here. But she did not expect her to not age. Okay, give me that. Give me that backstory. I'm ready. Reminds you of who? What was her name? Tell me her name. Tell me her name. By what name do you know her? By what name do you know her? Is this Yukari? Is this Yuka? What name did she have? You can't... Get away with this, Yamiko. She taps Koji on the back, and the two of them set off. You cannot keep this away from me. I can't believe how gross that was. Probably talking about the food, but we're going to learn about the food and about possibly Yuka backstory? In the next episode. And maybe not Yuka backstory, but Yamiko backstory. Okay, this, this road is actually extremely interesting. We are going to get a lot of details. I want to know what kind of like thing is that, that, that box in the well. The granite box or like stone box that, that looks like the coffin, like Koji said. And the walls, like, what's the deal with this? And, like, Yuka, and all of the things. Wow. Anyway, we're going to see this in the next episode. So, leave up a like. If you like the episode, subscribe. If you are not subscribed, check my Discord. If you are not on Discord yet, you can also become a member if you would like to support me and see the episodes earlier. Thank you, everyone, once again, for being with me. And I will see you all in the next one. So for now, Pocket Watch is going out.